So in today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about some more features in new quizzes that can really step up your game with how you assess students and then reassess students as they need to retake quizzes over and over. So before I do that, I'm going to go through real quick my system or my um, what kind of led me to using this feature in new, in new quizzes. So um, as you can see up here in my modules, I have them organized by standards, so 8.0.0. .0. There's practice one and practice two, and then they take a mastery check. Okay. Once I've finished all three of those, they go on to the standard 8.1.1a, practice three, four, five, six, seven, and then a mastery check. And then the same thing for 8.1.1b. Okay. So <clears throat> students will work through these. So they have to finish this practice before they get to this practice and so on and so forth. So they're showing proficiency in the, um, the learning objective of each one of these before they can move on to the next. So they can they are showing um, me, the teacher, so as I check them off, that they understand the learning objective for practice three before they get to practice four. So I have those communication um, conversations with students before they go on to the next assignment. And so it is kind of a self-paced in a lot of ways. I do do some teaching, but I allow them to um, kind of work. I give them time to work at their own pace. When they do get to a mastery check, um, it's locked by a code. So I'll let them into the mastery check after I've had a conversation about these practices. So once they're in the mastery check, <coughs> um, excuse me, mastery checks are always worth 10 points in my class. And usually that means it's only five questions. So each, <coughs> excuse me, uh, each question is worth two points each. So each mastery check you can see is 10 points, 10 points, and then five questions for each one. So let's say a student comes down here and they do the mastery check first. It shows them that they have to get at least a seven out of 10 before they can move on to the next practice. So let's say, for example, they took it first time and they just weren't quite ready. They got a 6.5 or a six, or even if they got an eight out of 10, they can go and retake it. So the system in our class is once before they go retake it, they have to go and fill out a form. Um, the issue, though, is in this system, if they're going to go retake quizzes over and over, we don't want them to retake the same quiz. And I also don't want to, as a teacher, to make a hundred different quizzes for them to be able to take. So I had to come up with a system to allow me to cycle out questions so that when kids retook a specific mastery check, they're getting different questions each time. So let me go into that system real quick. So I click on one of these quizzes or as we call mastery checks. All of the settings here are the same as a normal quiz, but the layout's gonna be very, very different than the one you're used to seeing. So I have the standard up here for them to see, and we do talk about the standard in class a lot. So when, when I put this up here and they read this, they've seen this like you know 50 times before, so it's pretty familiar to them. <clears throat> and then what you're gonna see looks very different than your traditional quiz. It says one question pulled randomly from bank 8.1.1 atomic model. And I'm going to give that two questions each, or two points each. And you'll see the exact same thing over and over. So I have five questions, but each time they take their quiz or their mastery check, they're going to get a random question out of this bank. They're going to get a random question out of this bank, this bank, this bank, and this bank. So essentially what I'm doing is, is I'm creating banks or item banks that I'm banking different questions. And so if student A goes and they score a six out of 10 the first time, they go and fill out the form. They're going to go and take it again. They're going to get a whole nother quiz. Um, and the way I get around making it um, equal or fair is I pull it from the same item bank. Okay. So let me let me pause real quick and let me back up. So let's go into item banks. Let me show you what I'm looking at here. So item banks is a feature in new quizzes that allows you to build um, questions in different banks. Okay. So you can see the 8.1.1 standard here. I have this a bunch of different times. So in, within the standard, there's a bunch of different parts that we wanted to assess. We wanted to assess their ability to make an atomic model um, location. This one looks at like where the protons, neutrons, and electrons are located, different molecules, the periodic table, so on and so forth. So if I click into one of these banks, you can see I have a question here. And this question is assessing um, their ability to look at a model of an atomic um, atomic model and identify strengths and weaknesses. Okay, this one down here is also looking at a different model of an atomic structure and identifying strengths and weaknesses. 
Okay, so you can see that in this bank, I have three questions in this bank. If a student was to, to get this question versus this question versus the question down here, they're all basically the same question. I'm assessing the same thing. So in the first time they take the quiz, they get this question. The second time they take the quiz, they might get this question. Okay, so it's it's nice because it gives them different questions, but they're not necessarily harder or easier or whatever. It's just a different question. So I'm still assessing their knowledge. Okay. So what I do first before anything else is I go through here and I build banks. So up here, you can click on bank. I'll say test bank for video. So this would create a bank down, down here. Um, before I show you inside there, you can do a couple different things. You can obviously edit the bank, you can delete the bank, but the coolest feature here is you can share the bank. So if I go back up to one of these, I've shared all these banks with my coworker Kelly. And so Kelly can go in and add features or add questions and stuff like that to the bank. I've made it that so she can edit. You can also share banks with people so they can just view it if you don't want them to have editing privileges. Okay. Once you're inside a bank, like this one here, you'll see that there's no questions, okay? And you can't really add questions in banks. So the way it works is if you want to add a question to a specific bank, you would have to add that question in a test first and then add it to a bank. So I'm gonna show you how that works. So let's say, for example, I wanna do a categorization, okay? And I'm just gonna do a random, um, so cat or um, the numbers, um, correctly. So here I am building the question. So I'm going to say even or odd. So if I'm in here, um, 12 is an even number, 8 is an even number, 6 is an even number. Odd is 3, 5, let's do 13. So if I have a question that I built here in a test, I can come down here there's a couple different options. So I can align this to outcomes. So I could click on this and align a standard or put a standard to this question. Or down here where it says item bank, you can say add to bank. So this is an existing item bank because I've already created this item bank. So if I wanted to add it to test bank for video, I would add it there. Okay. As soon as I do that, I go back up to my item banks, you'll see that it's right there. Okay, now as soon as I go to edit this question, so if I go here to edit, it's gonna say um, some options. So, so this is already stored in a bank. You have to edit this in the bank. So I'm gonna say edit in bank. And it's gonna come here and say, oh, I wanted to add some other, um, add some other answers or, or just do something that was different. Okay, so you would edit the question in the bank. Okay, so that's how you add questions into banks. Um, let me show you guys how to build a test from scratch. So I'm just gonna go down here, I'm just gonna make a, just kind of a mock quiz or test. Um, so test for video. So we're gonna go to build. So again, since all of my questions are already made in banks, all I need to do <clears throat> is click on this button here add content. Now down here, this is where you would add the specific questions if you wanted them. But again, I have these already saved in item bank. So this is the item banks logo here. So if I open up my item banks and let's say, for example, I'll just, I'll show you how I built the other one. So I want to build, <coughs> I want to build from this assessment. Now <coughs> you can come here and add specific questions individually. So if I click on that, it's going to add that to the test, okay? Or, let me take that away real fast. Or, to build it like the way I had it, I click up here and it says plus all or random. And then it's going to add this. Now, this is where you have some options, okay? So you could say, I want to use all of the questions, or I want to randomly select, let's see, let's see, I'm going to randomly select two of the questions and they're gonna be worth two points each, okay? Or one point each, or five points each, doesn't really matter, 
Okay, I can click done. So you can say two questions pulled randomly from this bank and they're worth this much each. Let's say, for example, I wanted to pull from another bank uh, molecules. And let's say this was a bigger part of our standard or these questions are going to be worth a little bit more or something like that. So let me use the same button. I'm going to add all. I'm going to click out of here. Um, okay, so you might want to say, okay, well, in this case, I want to pull three questions randomly and they are worth more points. I think that, you know, you could say, for example, molecules um, is a bigger part of the standard or more important or something that we had talked about more in class. Um, so I could add those as more points and have more of them, right? And again, you could also come on here and if you want to just say, no, no, actually, I really meant to say location. Or I really wanted this bank. Okay, you can do something like that. So again, the power of this is, is that one, you can allow students to retake quizzes or test over and over um, as many times as you want. Obviously in the settings tab, you can, um, you can uh, limit how many times students retake it. So for example, um, if I only wanted students to retake this twice and they needed at least one day in between attempts so that they had time to study or something like that. And, um, you know, I could say, for example, that I want them to, you know, as they take it more and more, I don't want them to necessarily keep the highest. I want them to take an average of all of these. So there's some settings in here, but it really allows students an opportunity to retake things over and over until they're actually proficient. And then they've actually demonstrated that they understand the um, content um, that you are assessing them, not necessarily on the first time, <clears throat> which is fine. Um, but you know, sometimes we want to give students multiple times to demonstrate their knowledge. And if there's a culture in your class that is built on like a process or built on, you know, if it doesn't work once, you know, we can relearn it and we can reflect on what we we learned from our mistakes and then retake it. Um, this can be a really, really powerful tool. So if you have any other questions on this, please let me know because this was a really quick tutorial. I'd be happy to help.